So today uh, we are going to see two important concepts and uh, this is the last concept in Python. So let's start with uh, exception handling. Exception handling and then after that we'll see how to work with the files. So let's start with exception handling. So normally what is an exception means? So this concept is there for every programming language but in Python it is a little different. So let me just uh, try to understand what is uh, exception handling. So the meaning of exception handling is exception is an event which will cause program termination. Exception is an event which will cause a program termination. So normally what happens is when you write your program, so you will have multiple number of statements like this. Suppose if there is any statement is taking some input from the user, right? So that user is given some invalid input and based on, the, based on that input, the rest of the statement should be executed. So sometimes a user may provide some invalid input or user may uh, give some incorrect input. So in those cases, what happens is this particular statement will throw some kind of a uh, error. That is basically we can call it as a exception, okay? And because of that exception, what is the problem we will have is rest of the statements will not be executed. If the statement throws some exception, the rest of the statements will not be executed. But when the exception will occur, whenever the user is doing some mistake on the program or whenever the user is providing some invalid input to the statement, then exceptions will occur. So exception is not basically an error because errors are different. Error means we have syntax errors, logical error. Again, syntax error means like uh, if you are not following uh, programming syntax, uh, those statements will obviously give the syntax errors, like like missing uh, single quotations or missing double quotations, and without defining the variable, if you still try to use that variable, so they are all different syntax errors. And what is a logical error means? The program will perfectly fine; it will execute it, but the output, whatever we are getting from the program, is incorrect. So they are basically comes under the logical errors and the only programmers or developers should be able to fix them. And syntax error means what? Programming errors. If you're not following proper rules of programming language, we will get the syntax errors. But apart from these two, we have another type of error called exception. So exception is basically an event which will cause a program termination. And when the exception will occur, whenever the user is providing some invalid input, to that particular statement in a program. So then exception will occur. So this is a concept, but because of that exception, the program will automatically terminate or immediately terminate and rest of the statements will not be executed. So this is the problem with the exception. So to handle the problem, what we will do is we have to handle that exception. We have to handle that exception. That is a concept of exception handling. So when you handle the exception, what happens is even though the statement is throwing some exception, and below the statements will be executed. Below statements will be executed even though this statement is throwing some exception. So that is a concept of exception handling. Okay. So in Python to handle the exceptions, we have three statements. We have something called try, accept, else. So by using these three statements, so we will be able to handle the exceptions. Okay. Now, let me just show you a simple example. What is an exception? And then we will try to understand how to handle the exception. Now, go back to the PyCharm. And let's create a new folder today. New directory. Day 10. So inside this, I'm creating a new Python file. I'll name it as exceptions. And this is by default a Python file. Okay, now let me just create a simple example, example one. So here I'm just writing some print statements. I say print and I can just write simple statement like this is, this is starting point of program. Now let me also write a few more statements like this. They're just a print statements I'm writing, I'm writing here. So three statements I have written. So after that, I'm writing one statement called print x. So do I have different x anywhere? No, right? But still I'm trying to print the value of x. And then I'll write a few more statements. Print, this is end of, end of 
the program and this is another statement i have printed here and then copy the statement and write multiple times so this is a simple program i have written so x is not defined anywhere but still i'm trying to print the value of x here right so let us try to execute this code then we'll see what will happen so we can just look at here so the program is successfully executed but it is saying something called name error and this is a kind of an exception and because of that what happens is only these three statements are executed but these three statements are not executed because the program is immediately terminated at this line print x because x is not defined that's a user mistake right so now we need to handle that exception so if you handle this exception obviously we will be able to execute the rest of the steps the program will not be terminated with the error so to do this we have to use something called try and accept so else is optional i'll tell you where we have to use else and finally is also there so i'll show you step, uh, other blocks but basically we will use only try and accept so by using these three uh, these two statements we will be able to handle the exception now what i will do is i will just put this statement in the uh, try block i say try and quotations say, uh, colon and this statement i'll keep inside the try and then accept in the accept i will just write a one simple statement like i can just display the name of the exception also i can say print exception occurred okay so this is a way we need to handle so what whichever statement is throwing some exception and that statement or those statements sometimes you may have multiple statement you don't know exactly which statement is throwing exception so if you have doubt about those statements what you can do is you can just keep all the statements inside the try block so normally what happens is while developing the application developers will know before uh, writing the code while writing the code before uh, before itself the developers will know where exactly the chances are there to provide the input to the program so x is just like an input variable right so so developer think like that and immediately he will keep those statements in the try block and by chance suppose if there is any uh, exception occurred immediately the catch uh, here accept block will automatically handle that exception and rest of the statements also will be executed as usual so no issues with that so by using try and accept block we will handle that exception in the accept block also we can write multiple statement but these statements will be executed only if the statement throws some exception otherwise not now let's try to execute now see this just look at here you don't see any error in the output now so instead of that the accept block is executed so that we got this message exception is occurred it is clearly saying exception is occurred but program is not immediately terminated instead of that rest of the statements are as usual executed so this is how we need to handle the exception so exception means an event which will occur whenever the user is providing the some invalid input which will cause the program termination that's the main impact on the program so what we need to do as a developer as a programmer we need to handle that exception this is a developer job but while, while writing the automation script also sometimes you may have some exceptions we should handle them suppose you are looking for some web element on the web page or you are looking for something like text box or image on your web page and which is not available on the web page then obviously it will throw some exception so in automation we will handle the, those type of exception but again the way is same like we have to use only try and accept block exceptions will be different different type of exception exceptions will be there but handling the exceptions is exactly the same so now we can just look at here so whichever statement is causing that exception we keep that inside the try block and sometimes it may be one or multiple and accept a block will execute the handle that exception so that's the reason this statement is printed in the uh, in output window and rest of the statements are continued so this is a simple example of how to get an exception how to handle that exception let me show you one more example example 2 okay so let me just write a few statements here print this is starting point of program and this is program in progress i just written two print statements now 
here I'll write one more print statement. So I say 10 comma 5, 10 divided by 5. So what is an output you will get? 5 to the 10, remainder is 0. So this statement will perfectly work fine. So no issues at all in this statement. Okay, let's try to execute. After that, I will write one statement called print. And uh, here I'll say program completed. Program completed. Now observe this. This simple program I have written. First two statements I have written. And then I am doing some calculation 10 divided by 5. And uh, then program is completed. So when I execute this, so this statement is perfectly executed. So 5 2s are 10. So 2 is the written value. So this is a written value which is given. This is perfectly fine. So we got, we haven't get any exception on this statement. So the final statement is also successfully executed. So sometimes if I just say zero here. So if any number is divided by zero, which is again, infinity will give you, right? So that is the statement which will give you exception. So now let us execute this and what type of exception it will give you. It will give you zero division error exception, zero division error exception. So when you will get this kind of exception, if any number is divided by zero, which is causing the zero division error exception. So now we need to handle this to continue the rest of the statements. How we can handle this? Now we have to keep this statement inside the try block. I can say try. Inside is intendation is very important. After putting the try block, right? So you should not keep this print statement like this. This is incorrect. Okay, because print is not part of try. We have to use one tab space. So then only this print is part of try block. Now, if this statement is thrown exception, we should be able to handle that. For that, we need to write one more block called accept block. Accept. And one more thing is in the accept, we can also specify the exception name. Okay, so in which exception should come. So sometimes you may see multiple accept block also. Sometimes we can have multiple accept blocks. So I'll tell you why we need multiple accept blocks. But here, instead of leaving this except as, as usual like this, we can also specify the, uh, we can also specify the exception name, okay? So how to specify the exception name? You can just copy from here. This is zero division error, except, and here you can specify that, except. So if this statement is thrown, this particular exception, exception, and then handle it, just print the statement. So now what happens if this statement is exactly thrown zero division error, then only this except block will able to handle it. Otherwise not. Okay. If this statement thrown some other exception, but here we mentioned this kind of exception like zero division error, but it is giving some different type of exception, then except block cannot handle it. Okay. So instead of specifying that exception name, better to have except block as it is just like a previous example. Because if you keep accept block as it is like this, which will able to handle all kinds of exceptions, whatever it is thrown, doesn't matter. So that is another advantage. And we can also, if I want to specifically say what kind of exception, you can just specify the exception name if you know that. Otherwise, you can just leave it, no problem. So now program completed is a actual statement. But inside the accept block, what you will write? Print. And here I can say exception occurred. And also handled okay so this is a statement now this print statement comes under the try block this print statement comes under the accept block and this print statement is comes under the program so which is not belongs to any of these two blocks this is a separate statement this print is a separate statement now even though we divide this number by zero still accept block will handle that exception and this statement is printed so earlier, what happens if I don't use try except block, it is just directly giving the error, zero division error exception, and this statement is skipped. This statement is not executed here because it is terminated here itself. But this time, this exception will handle, and this statement also will be printed in the console window. So execute. Yes, now you can just look at this output. So these two statements are as usual printed. Now, this is a statement actually comes from exception block, this block. And because this statement is thrown some exception. So finally, the program is completed message we got. Suppose if statement is not thrown exception, still can we use except try block? Yes, you can still use it. 
if it is not thrown any exception exception block will not execute it will just ignore it because this statement is not thrown any exception so this will ignore it when this except block will execute if the statement is thrown some exception then only except block will handle it otherwise it will just ignore the except block and rest of the statements will as usual will continue so when I execute, so this time we got the right output from this statement. So there is no exception occurred. So directly program is completed, statement is printed. So this is how we can also use try and accept. And sometimes you may have multiple accept blocks. Okay, we can also specify multiple accept blocks. Suppose here I have given some type of exception and this statement is thrown some other type of exception other than this one then what happens still there is a chance of getting an exception. So one other solution is we can specify multiple except blocks. So any one of the block will able to handle this exception. Suppose if you don't know the exception names and directly go with the first approach, except column. So this will able to handle all kinds of exception. But if you know, or if you are aware of the exception names, only through practice, you will understand. Okay. What are the exceptions are there? So many exceptions are there. It's very difficult to remember everything. Okay. So if you know exactly few number of exceptions, and if you are confident enough to know what exactly exception this statement will throw, so then you can directly specify what kind of exception. And suppose you don't know exactly, you are assuming like this exception may throw three to different four exceptions are there in your mind. And you think like this statement will throw one of the exception among them. So you can just directly specify multiple accept statement with multiple names. So one of the accept statement will be handle this exception. Okay, so let me show you one more example. Multiple accept blocks. Example three. Multiple accept blocks. So how to specify the multiple accept blocks? Again, now I'll show you one more example here. And uh, this time I'm also going to use some other thing called else. So here I'm using except, try first, okay, try, except, and also I'm trying to introduce one more thing called else and finally blocks. So when we need to go for else and final blocks, I will show you that. So here uh, I will take one example. Let us say, let us say I have number one comma num two equal to 10 comma five. So two numbers I have taken. Number one value is 10, number two value is equal to five. Now result equal to, result equal to number one divided by number two. So here 10 divided by five only. Okay, number one divided by number two. And just I'm printing, result is result is i'm just printing the result here the simple program so what is an output you will get here is you will get 2.0 this code is perfectly fine so number one is 10 number two is 5 10 divided by 5 2.0 which is written this is a result and uh, these are the input values so a user has to provide those input values suppose uh, instead of uh, doing this i say zero here it is almost similar to the above example, but I'll show you the different options here. So 10 comma zero I have given. Now if I just execute, so we got the zero division error exception. And who is send, who is giving this exception? This particular statement is giving an exception, right? So now we need to handle it. How to handle it? You can just say the whole thing you can put in the try block like this. And then you can just push them into try block, three statements this time. And now accept, accept, and what kind of exception is thrown? Zero division error. You can specify that. If the statement is thrown this exception, then what should we do is we have to just print some message. I can say simply thrown, thrown zero division zero. This is the exception actually, which is thrown. I'm just specifying this. So thrown zero division error exception. Okay, this is a simple statement I have written in the accept block. Now, if I just look at here, if any of these statement is thrown some exception, actually these are only statement which will throw an exception. So as soon as it is thrown some exception, we don't, we do not print any result. We will not get any result. So exception, accept block will handle that exception. 
suppose there is another type of exception called syntax error exception so we can also specify that except and sometimes you may have this kind of uh, exception so syntax error so in python errors and exception will be considered as the same sometimes but actually programming perspective they are not the same syntax error is different logical error is different exception is different but in python even exceptions also they have uh, named it as error so that's the reason it says syntax error okay so accept a syntax error and then and here i'm writing one more statement suppose if this thrown this statement is thrown some other exception other than zero division error then this statement syntax error will execute but again the particular exception should be exactly matched with the syntax error exception then only this block will execute so now here i'm writing simple i say thrown syntax error exception syntax error exception so this is another type of exception which we have in python okay suppose uh, the statement is throwing some other exception other than these two exceptions and finally you can specify accept and this will be able to handle so print and here you can say uh, exception handled exception handled so till now fine we understood so whichever statement is thrown some exception from the try block so one of the accept block will be handled it can be any accept block suppose if this thrown some zero division error exception so first will handle if the statement throws some other in syntax error exception this will handle and if this is statement thrown some other some other exception other than these two then third accept block will be able to handle now what about the else block so we have something called else block also so when this else block will execute so else block will execute only if there are no exceptions so if none of the statements are not thrown in exceptions else block will execute so here i can just print exception no exceptions occurred i can simply say no exceptions occur because else block will execute every time whenever there is no exceptions are occur if these statements are not thrown in exceptions and then else block will execute if these statements are throwing some type of exception one of the accept block will able to handle and if these statements are not throwing any exception then else block will be executed but when finally block will execute there is one more block called finally so this block will always execute exception occur doesn't occur it's not a matter so every time finally block will execute so print i'm just printing here so always execute so now let me repeat once again so whenever you say accept blocks these blocks will be executed only the statements thrown some exception otherwise not but if the statements are not thrown exceptions what happens accept block anyway will ignore but else block will execute okay else block will execute only if the exceptions are cut if there are no exceptions then else block will execute if the exceptions is occurred accept block will execute but exceptions are occur or not occur doesn't matter finally block will always execute so that is the difference between these blocks okay so let me repeat once again if the exceptions are occur one of the accept block will able to handle else block will not execute finally block always execute that's the one case other cases exception is not occurred for example then accept block will ignore and still else block will execute and finally block always execute so this is the context okay so let me just write here accept block executes only when exception occurred otherwise which will not execute and uh, then else block executes only exceptions not occurred and finally block always executes always executes whether exception occurred or not occur doesn't matter it will always execute so these are the three uh, statement and in which order we have to write so else block should uh, uh, else block we have to specify after completion of all except blocks 
Okay, so finally block we have to write after completion of all the blocks. Even these two blocks are optional, not mandatorily required. So try always should be followed by accept block. So when I say try, accept block should be there. At least one block should be there. And even rest of the accept block also optional. Similarly, else and finally also optional, not mandatory. Okay, and if they want, if you want to write something, if the exception is not occurred, then you can just write the same uh, some statements here. Otherwise, you can just ignore these two blocks. You can no need to write these two blocks. And finally, block is always execute. So this is how we need to use try, accept, else, and finally blocks. And let me show you in multiple example, multiple scenarios here. So first time I say 10 comma 5. Now what is an output we will expect from this program? 10 comma 5. Let's execute and see. Now we can just look at here. Result is 2.0. So this is perfectly printed result. That means there is no exception occurred. So immediately what happens? Except blocks are ignored. Else part is executed. So no exceptions are occurred. And the final is also executed. So this is one scenario. Now let me just make it zero. Now this statement will throw exception. So what is an output you will expect now? When I run this, see, you can see the first except block is handle that exception. Right, because this statement is thrown some exception. So the first block is handle that exception. And the else block will not execute now. So rest of the except block will ignore. Else block will not execute. Else block will execute only, only if there are no exceptions. Right, but if there are exceptions, else block will not execute. So we haven't get that message. But still, finally, block is executed. We got the output here. So this is how we can handle the exceptions by using different statements. In our automation sessions, I will show you more number of exceptions because this is a fundamental understanding. What is exception? How to handle the exception by using try and accept blocks. Okay, and sometimes in the programming level, so we can also throw some exception. Like we can call them as a user defined exceptions. We can create our own exception and we can throw it. Let me just show you a simple example. And uh, let me just give one more example. Example four. So rising our own exceptions. Rising our own exceptions. So let me just write a function. Okay. I say def uh, and just write one function called enter age. Enter age. So here this function will take one argument called age. And inside this, what I'm going to do is I'm just writing some condition. If age value is less than zero okay if the age value is less than zero i want to throw some exception to the program so you use rise keyword rise is the keyword which is used to throw some exception or rise some exception so i want to do something here suppose uh, what i will say age so i want to find okay so or you can simply say some number now instead of age let's take a number Okay, so I want to find a number is even or odd. Okay, even number or odd number. But uh, if the number is less than zero, can I check whether it's even or an odd number? It is invalid, first of all. Even or odd numbers are always greater than zero. So by mistake, if I pass number equal to zero and it cannot uh, find even or odd number, right? So in that case, what I will do, first I will check this number equal to less than zero or not. If less than zero, I'll raise some exception called value error. This is also one kind of exception. So here I will write what's an exception message. I will write only, only uh, integers are allowed because after zero, whatever are there, we can call them as integers. Only integers are allowed, right? Else, or we can say if, so number, and how we will say this number is even or odd number. If the number is divided by two, number is divided by which is producing zero as an output, which is even number. So simply you can print number is even. Else, else print number is odd number. So this is a simple function I have written, right? So suppose who will use this function? Somebody else will use this function. And if you want to find even number, odd number, we will call this function by passing a number. Now observe this. I'll just call that function. What is the function name? How to call the function? And this is a, not a uh, method, okay? Because we have not created any class, nothing. Just simple function. 
and by specifying the name we can call the function so enter age and here i'm passing some number called temp that's it right so we just pass a number this will give you output so let's try to execute this and even number perfectly fine now when i pass uh, nine or five so this will also give perfectly fine odd number but suppose when you pass something called zero so then what happens it is giving again even number suppose i pass minus 1 minus 1 i passed so now what happens here we are checking if the number is less than 0 throw this exception so now what happens is this will give you this exception value error exception this is a user defined exception we created our own exception based on certain condition if the number is less than 0 we are throwing some exception so people who are is using this function they have to rightly pass this value if they don't pass the value rightly so then this exception will occur okay this exception will occur so now let us try to handle that exception now this is a programmatic uh, way of learning the code okay so this is a function now let me just think as a user so this is a function which is implemented somebody else so now i want to use this function for my purpose a different purpose okay but when you try to call the function like this by passing zero right so uh, by passing minus 1 and this is giving some exception giving so now i need to handle this exception even though the statement is thrown some exception i just want to continue with the code okay so what i will do here is i will just create some variable called number value is minus 1 and here i will pass the number variable so now what happens this statement will throw some exception right so this statement will throw some exception now i'll keep this statement in the try block right enter age and now this statement is thrown some exception just i'm accepting this exception and you can also specify the name because we know the name of the exception value error that you can specify here right so now when i call the function which will throw some exception now as per the implementation if you pass a negative value and then still we want to handle that exception so we can write accept value error and here you can write a simple message to the user i say print value uh, error value error exception occurred and handled and handled okay so this is how we can accept so we can just print something if you want to print you can just print some statement here print and here i can just say checking number is even or odd by calling function right so after completion of the program i will write one more statement here print program completed so this is a statement i have written now when i pass normal value when i say five so this will give you odd number perfectly fine so the first statement is executed result we got and program is completed also perfectly fine now when you pass the negative value here so according to the negative value what is the function will throw value error exception will throw so again this statement will throw some exception when you call this so we have to handle that exception and print that message here so now this state this time this will able to handle the exception now you can see you will not get any error so this statement is printed checking number is even or odd by calling the function but here exception is occurred so rest of the statement is also printed here so normally if the statement throws some exception the rest of the statement should not execute but we should handle that exception here we have handled that exception so that's the reason rest of the statements also executed so this type of exceptions called as a user defined exception or raising our own exceptions sometimes the developers while implementing the code they will raise their own exception because these functions will be called from somebody else at that time if there is a chance of passing the invalid input in those cases handling the exception is a responsibility of the developers at the time of writing the code okay so this is a how we need to just work with exception simple and very simple basic concept i'm just you need to aware of it so what is an exception and uh, what is the impact when you get an exception and how to handle the exception so this is a simple concept okay this much is enough 
the concept and uh, once you start automation testing we will see automation related exceptions that time okay so this is a one concept and uh, now let us move on to the next concept today that is also a very small concept uh, file handling or we can say working with the text files working with the text files so sometimes in automation there will be some requirement like suppose you have some external file right so through program you should be able to write some text on the text file or you should be able to read the text from the text file so these operations we should be able to through or we should be able to do through automation code so that time we have to write some python code okay so again similarly we sometimes we get the data from excel sheet and we'll write the data in the excel sheet and sometimes we need to also work with the database these are all external things like text files or databases or excel files so through python code we will be able to interact with those files and uh, we'll get the data from those files and sometimes we will write our own data or results we into those particular files so in those cases file handling concept will be very useful but instead of using text files most of the times we use excel sheets and databases most of the times in automation testing especially when you do the data driven testing we use excel sheets and databases but in working with the text file is very rare cases but interview point of view this is most important okay they will ask you to write some piece of code how to read data from the text file or how to write the data into the text file or our text file is already there which which contains some some data now you want to add a new data some additional data into the same text file without deleting the existing data and all these operations should do through programming so you have to write a python program that's another most important thing which we need to understand now let me show you a few examples. It is not a big thing. It is not a big concept. It is very small topic and very easy to understand also. And but when you go with the Java and again these things are very complex. But in Python it's very very simple and very easy. So let me show you how to work with the files now. Let me close this example. Create another Python file and then name it as handling files. Okay, so handling files. Now, the first example is example one. Suppose uh, I want to write some data into the file. So let's say I have already have some text file. So let me just go to the C drive. And here I will create some file. Let's say, do you have any data file? Just a moment. <coughs> Okay, so let me just create a new file, a new folder. Okay, I'll name it as something called demo files. So inside this folder, I will just create one simple text file, txt, and I'll name it as my file.txt. So now currently this file is empty, it doesn't have any data now, right? Now I want to write some data into the file through Python program. So I want to write some some a certain number of lines of like some statements I want to write in this file. So through Python program. So now let us see how to write step by step. So writing data into text file. Okay, so here the first step is we have direct uh, predefined function is available called open. Okay, so in this we have to pass uh, two parameters. We have to pass two parameters, two arguments. One is the location of the file, and the second parameter is a mode. So mode is nothing but either reading mode or writing mode or append mode. So there are three modes are there: reading, writing, and appending. So that we need to specify as a second argument. So open is a predefined function which is already there in Python. It does the reason it is very very simple to do that. But if you go with the Java, we have to write a, a lot of code there. Okay, at least five to six lines of code we have to write. But here with single line, we will be able to achieve it. So in the first argument is location of the file we have to pass. And where is my file is available? So this is the location and specify. Inside the demo files, the name of the file is myfile.txt. So that I can specify myfile.txt. And this file 
uh, in this file, I want to write the data, right? It is empty currently. I want to write the data into the file. So first of all, we have to open the file in the writing mode. So for that, we have to specify one more argument called small w, small w. So this is representing the writing mode. There are three modes are there. W representing writing, R representing reading, A representing appending. Okay. So now open function, what this function will do, which will open this file in the writing mode, in the writing mode. And uh, I will define one variable here, which is representing that file. Now, whatever file is open with this function in the writing mode, I'm saving that file in a variable that is F. F is representing the file now. Okay. File. Now inside the F means, or you can directly write file. Okay. Now inside the file, I want to write some data or some statements I want to write. Simply you can write one method file dot. There is a method called write simple. And here you can specify the statements, whatever you want to write. You can simply write, this is my first statement. Okay. Similarly, I can write multiple lines in the same file like this. It is my first statement, second statement and third statement, fourth statement and fifth statements. So total three, four, five statements have written. So once you write these five statements in the file and finally here we open the file in the writing mode, right? After doing the task, we will close that file. So file dot close, file dot close. And here I simply write one simple confirmation message called program completed. So this is simple program. Now let us execute and see how this is going to write these statements in the file. So currently this file is empty. I don't have any data. Let me open the file once again. So this is a file, my file.txt is doesn't have any data. Now go back and then execute. Run handling files. Yeah. Now program is completed. Now you can just go back and open the file. Now you can see all the statements are printed like this, but I want to print these statements line by line, because if I just look at here, it is just added all the statements in multiple lines. So after this next statement is started after this next statement, third line, fourth line. actually these statements are not, not printed in the multiple lines. This basically combined everything into line because this line is end here. That's the reason rest of the statements are come to the next line, but actually it is considered as a one line. But my requirement is I want to write these statements in multiple lines, just like this. Okay. So for that, what you can do is we can just write something. Let me just remove this data, save the file again, go back. So here you can just use one small operator called slash n. Slash n is representing the new line. So now what happens as soon as this statement is got printed, this slash n will jump into the next line. And then this statement will print after that again, slash n again, slash n. So slash n is representing is a keyword in Python. So which will directly go to the new line. So for the last statement is not required because this is itself is a last statement. If there are any other statement after this, then you have to specify the slash n or else not required. Now execute done. Now go back, open the file. Yes. Now you can see we got exact data in the file lines. So this is how we can just write data into the text files using program, simple single line code. And how many lines you want to write those number of write statements, you can use it. And whenever you open the file, you have to close it. And two things are important, the file path and in which mode you are opening the file. If you want to write data, you have to specify the writing mode, which is W. And if you want to open the file for reading purpose, you have to use R reading mode. Okay. Now let me just comment this code. And now this, uh, this file already contains the data now. Okay. I want to read this data. Then I want to print in the Python console. So now we'll see how to read this data from this file already data is available. So I want to read this data, go back and example two. So reading data from text file reading data from text file. So again, same statement, same thing, nothing new. So just to specify this statement, 
sorry just a second yeah okay so but here we have to say reading mode open the file in the reading mode same file which contains some data reading mode and that file is saved in the file variable now we need to read the data so to read the data simply what you can use file dot read method file dot read now there are two functions are there in the file we have two methods are there one is read is there other one is read line is also there read line is basically read only first line single line from the text file and uh, there is one more method called only read so this will read all the lines even this is also will read all the lines so let me just use first method so file dot read but which will read all the lines but who is printing those lines we have to print those lines so keep that in the print statement so file dot read will just read the data but who will print it print function will print it so we have to keep these statements inside the print and after that close the file file dot close open the file in the reading mode and print the data and close it execute now so now we got all the data from the text file and suppose i want to get only the first line only line so we can simply say read line so here instead of doing that comment this now instead of read method i'm just calling read line then execute so only first statement got printed this is my first statement only first statement only one statement got printed print read and read line methods okay so this is uh, these are the example of reading data from the text file reading data from the text file now suppose i want to append the data into the text file suppose i already have few lines in my text file I already have five lines and i want to add two more additional lines or i want to add one more additional line right so how we can append but existing data should be there i don't want to corrupt the existing data i just want to append the new lines in the text file so for that we can do like this comment example three appending data into file text file appending data into the text file now again same statement but this time you have to use a append mode so which will open the file in the append mode and referring with the file variable now we need to add some other text right so just take the file and if i open this in the writing mode right if i just open this in the writing mode like this and when i use file dot write okay then what happens is the data will be override so already data whatever is there in the file will be removed and the new lines of uh, what are the new statements we are right here will be added if you open the file in the writing mode and do use uh, write write method so we should not do that okay so when i use when i open the file in the writing mode when i use write method then it will automatically remove the existing statements and add new lines but that's not our requirement now so existing lines should be there but new lines we need to append so that's the reason we have to use append now here method is same file dot write and here i can write this is this is my seventh or sixth line sixth line and i can say slash n and similarly i can write one more line sixth and the seventh line and after that you can just close the file file dot close file dot close okay and then confirmation message i'm just printing print program is completed so now our text file is already having some data so five statements now let me execute it so program is completed now go back and see yes so fifth statement is already there so sixth uh, sixth line and seventh line is got printed so why it is printed in the same line because uh, here we have to keep iphone yen because earlier in the program we have not specified slash n here that's the reason okay 
execute now yes now you can see previously already there because it is up and more so new two lines are added sixth line and seventh line so these are the simple and very basic operations which we can do on the text files just remember this and sometimes uh, we use in automation also uh, once you start automation we'll we'll uh, try to understand this one more time and where exactly real use case uh, we use especially while working with the test data so we specify the data in the text files sometimes excel files but more than the text files excel and database is more important so we will discuss those concepts separately how to work with excel and uh, database because by default python doesn't support we have to import a uh, third party modules a separate modules are available so we have to import those modules database related modules excel sheet related modules and then we will get certain number of methods so by which we will be able to handle those files but text file handling is default inbuilt functionality which is already there in python okay so file dot close uh, basically save the file yes yeah you can consider that so if i don't uh, close the file what happens is sometimes the file will be still open in the memory okay so this is a good practice even if you are not using close which it, it will work but sometimes what happens is when you try to close a file or if you want to delete the file manually, it will not happen. Why? Because in the memory, this file is still open by this program. So our program will lock that file until unless you do close, our program will not release that file from the memory. Okay. So always, whenever you open something, close something after completion of your task, close that one. That's the best practice. If I don't close it, what happens? We open the file, right? So this will occupy a certain amount of memory, memory, right? So that memory space still open and that is misused actually. Okay, so because of it is misused, what happens is then sometimes you may face some issues with the file will be locked by some program. You cannot delete the file or you, can modify, you cannot modify the file manually. You cannot do multiple operations. So sometimes you may get that kind of problem. So instead of that, you can just close the file. It's the best thing, okay? So whenever you open the file, which will basically uh, open some memory location, okay? So it will occupy certain amount of memory and we have to clear that memory. So for that, we use close command. Even when you're working with the databases, Excel sheets also same process. When you read the data from Excel or when you write the data in Excel, first we have to open it and do all your tasks and close it. Similarly, database also there. So from the database, we will open the connection and do all the transactions and close the database connection. So that will be uh, make free memory actually. Okay, that's the main concept. Okay, guys. So these are two simple topics for today's session. And uh, from tomorrow, we will start automation sessions, Selenium automation sessions, and using Python programming language. So for whatever concepts we have discussed in Python, so they are more than enough to understand automation. And uh, already uploaded one document for practicing. So you can just practice those examples, and they are more than enough from Python. Okay. So that's it for today's session. I'm just stopping here. We'll continue tomorrow.